Hello again, and welcome to our screencast on conditional probability and independence. We are group B9. I'm Alex Visaki with Mike Holly and Derek Emelander. And for more videos on discrete math topics, you can visit www.knoadam.com. So let's get started. First thing we're going to discuss is conditional probability. The definition of conditional probability is when you're trying to find the probability of event E when given event F, assuming the probability of, of event F is greater than zero, then that probability equals the probability of E and F over the probability of F. So the best way to explain this would be through a simple example. Say you have a family with, with two children and you want to find the probability that this family has two boys given that you know that there is at least one boy. So at first you have to find the sample space. The sample space for this, meaning all the possible, all the possible options for two children, would be having either two boys, a boy then a girl, a girl then a boy, or two girls. They're all equally likely with possibility of one-fourth. Now, if you let E be the event that a family with two children has two boys, which we're trying to find here, and F is the event that, there, that it was given that there was at least one boy, then it follows that E equals the set with two boys, and F equals the set with either boy girl, girl boy, or two girls. We now know that the probability of E is one fourth, the probability of F is three fourths. So now simply filling in the formula, we know that the probability of two boys given at least one boy already is one-fourth over three-fourths, which equals one-third. Here we have a little bit different of an example. Uh, we're going to deal with, there's a person, we'll call him Ramesh, and we're going to calculate the probability that he's late to work. Now, L is the event that he's late to work. We have A is the event that he takes his bike to work, B is the probability, or the event that he takes his car, and C is the event that he takes the bus. Now, as you can see here, each probability, probability of A, probability of B, and probability of C, they're all equal, so he has a one-third chance of taking either his bike, car, or the bus. And, um, when he takes his bike, he's only late 5% of the time. When he takes the car, he's late 50% of the time. And when he takes the bus, he's only late 20% of the time. So we want to calculate if he's late. So uh, pretty easy here. You just multiply the, event a, the probability of event A multiplied by the probability that he's late given the event A, and so on and so forth. So we have the probability that he's late equals probability that he takes the bike times the probability that he is late because he took his bike. And if we continue in that fashion, now if we do that math, we end up with the probability that he is late is 25%. Now to continue this example, we're going to change it up a little bit. It's, the same, it's still the same probability that he's late given that he takes each way to work. However, now we're going to say that if he, t he takes his bike 60% of the time, his car 30% of the time, and the bus 10% of the time. So we just use that little formula again.
And again, if you go through and do the math, we're gonna get only a 20% chance that he is late to work that day. Now, the second example, not example, the second topic we're gonna talk about is independence. Uh, you have two events, E and F, and you say they're independent if and only if. The, probab the probability that both events occur is equal to the probability of the first event multiplied by the probability of the second event. We're going to look at an example of independence here. Um, it's an online shopping example based on some made-up data set of whether customers were satisfied or not satisfied with their online shopping experience and whether their product that they ordered arrived on time or not on time. Now, the, <clears throat> the topic of independence says that if two um, events, A and B, as you can see here, are independent, then the probability of A given B will equal the probability of A. And here we're going to treat the prob we're going to treat A as the customer being satisfied and B being the fact that the product arrived on time. So if we work this out, P of um, the customer being satisfied given the product arrived on time is going to equal, um, uh, right here you have given the product was on time and the customer was satisfied, you have 800 right here, that goes on top divided by the total number of on time, which is right here. So 800 divided by 880 equals roughly 91%. Now, if we just figure out the sole probability of a customer being satisfied, it's just P of A, so you're looking for um, when they were satisfied, which is again right here and here. So you have 800 plus 20 over the total number of customers, right here, 1,000, which gives you 82%. Since these numbers are different, you can see that they are not independent. If the events would have been independent, the percentages would have been the same. Um, there are also two other kinds of independence. First one is pairwise independence. And this basically is dealing with when you have more than two events. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, the, if you have the events E1, E2, all the way to E sub N, um, those events will be pairwise if the probability of the intersection of those events equals the probability of the product of those events, given that I and J are pairs of integers between 1 and N. This is basically saying that if the intersection of two probabilities equal the probabilities multiplied together, then those two events, I and J, are going to be pairwise independent. The next kind of independence is events being mutually independent, and this deals with lists of um, events. And these events will be mutually independent if the entire set of the E sub I sub 1 all the way through E sub I sub M, the intersections of all of those is equal to the product of all of those probabilities. And down here you can see the conditions for I of J and J and how the numbers need to line up with N and M. This is basically saying that this is a way to prove that a whole entire group of events E sub 1 through E sub n is independent. Um, that's all we have for today. Thanks for listening. And if you need more information on discrete mathematics, visit knoadam.com.